The chip war, reversal of offense and defense. Why did the blockade backfire and help China? In 2022, the U.S. Department of Commerce unveiled the Chips and Science Act, collaborating with allies to construct a comprehensive technological iron curtain covering design, manufacturing, and packaging across the entire supply chain. Over three years, Dutch export bans on lithography machines intensified, TSMC severed supplies of high-end foundry services, and NVIDIA's H100-H800 chips were placed under strict export controls, with even older A100 models facing computing power limits. However, a dramatic twist unfolded in 2025. Huawei's Ascend 910C chip emerged as a dark horse, forging a path to success with an expected annual shipment exceeding 700,000 units. This far surpassed the 200,000-unit projection by U.S. intelligence agencies and was more than triple the production capacity of NVIDIA's H20 chip, approved for export to China. Real-world testing shows the Ascend 910C achieving a peak single-card computing power of 1024 teraflops in AI large model training scenarios, essentially doubling the performance of the H20's 448 teraflops, while comprehensively outperforming it in memory bandwidth, and energy efficiency. In this technological breakthrough battle, how did the seemingly impenetrable blockade become a catalyst for the Chinese chip industry's advance? Why did the meticulously designed U.S. containment strategy instead trigger a strategic counterattack from Chinese technology companies in this vital computing power race? FP32 Floating Point Operation Performance acts as a precise speedometer with every data fluctuation measuring the chip's ultimate capability. Evidence shows that NVIDIA's H20 chip has a peak computing power of 160 teraflops in FP32 operation scenarios, akin to a stable, high-speed supercar. However, the emergence of Huawei's Ascend 910B completely reshaped the landscape. Its FP32 computing power surged to 320 teraflops, a direct doubling of performance like a racing car equipped with a much stronger engine, crossing the finish line with overwhelming dominance. Even more strategically significant, the SN 910B has established a complete, localized technical closed loop. From the underlying EDA design software and the core chip architecture solution to the 7 nanometers advanced process technology, everything is now independently controllable. This signifies that on the computing power track, China has not only completed the leap from follower to leader but, by independently building a super track and self-developing, high-performance race cars, has completely broken free from dependence on the U.S. technology system. While the global chip industry struggles with the pain of supply chain disruption, the Ascend 910B proves that independent innovation is the ultimate code to break through technology blockades. And that's not the most stunning part. Rewind to 2021 when the market share of domestic AI chips globally was only 7%. At that time, Chinese companies were largely technical followers in international competition, with a scarce presence in the high-end computing chip sector. However, in just two years, with domestic firms continuously pushing boundaries in architecture innovation, process breakthroughs, and ecosystem compatibility, market research data for 2023 shows this figure has soared to 32% achieving a leap from marginal participant to core competitor. Even more dramatically, the allies who followed the U.S. policy of blocking chips to China are now suffering the bitter consequences of economic backlash. Japan's semiconductor equipment exports plunged 20% year-on-year due to the loss of the Chinese market, forcing several century-old companies to shut down production lines. The EU, despite investing tens of billions of euros to advance its Chips Act saw its mid-2024 assessment reveal that its independent chip capacity construction only reached 43% of the target, showing a severe imbalance between massive capital input and output. The dramatic shakeup of the global chip industry landscape confirms the irresistible wave of technological autonomy. Next, let's dissect. Why is the U.S. simultaneously blocking and allowing exports? How were its allies badly hit? And what major counter moves is China holding? I. The U.S.'s schizophrenic control, blocking with the left hand, pumping money with the right? The actions of the second Trump administration are magical. On one hand, 
it placed Huawei's Ascend 910B on the key blacklist, further tightening the 50% U.S. technology content rule, forcing global companies to apply for licenses. On the other hand, it approved the export of NVIDIA's H20 and Supermicro's MI308 to China, adding a 15% revenue-sharing condition, infuriating Congress, which called it unconstitutional. This contradictory maneuver harbors a selfish motive, delay China's AI development, while preventing domestic giants from starving. NVIDIA alone lost $8 billion from the H20 export restrictions, its stock price tumbled 6%, and CEO Jensen Huan even admitted the controls were a complete failure. Looking back at history, in the 1980s, the U.S. forced Japan to sign the Semiconductor Agreement. While ostensibly containing Japan, this move actually allowed Samsung to rise, causing Japan to drop from holding six of the top ten global spots to merely retaining its equipment foundation. The U.S. is now repeating the same mistake. Data from 2024 shows U.S. semiconductor exports to China fell by 18%, while China's imports from South Korea and Europe rose by 22%, essentially handing the market over to others. Analytical Commentary, the U.S.'s Two-Sided Operation In the chip sector, while seemingly a precise strategic layout, actually exposes a deep rift between industrial interests and political manipulation. Politically, the U.S. attempts to maintain its technological hegemony through chip export controls to China, weaponizing the chip industry for geopolitical competition. Industrially, this short-sighted behavior runs counter to the fundamental logic of the chip industry's development. Chip technology iteration relies heavily on the massive data feedback and commercial profitability driven by a huge market size. China which accounts for 40% of the global AI chip demand, is one of the core forces driving technological innovation. History has long proven that technological hegemony cannot be sustained by closing the door. From Britain's attempt to monopolize steam engine technology in the 19th century to the decline of Japan's semiconductor industry under U.S. trade pressure in the 20th century. The U.S.'s self-destructive gamble, sacrificing long-term industrial development, will ultimately erode the foundation of its semiconductor industry due to market shrinkage and innovation stagnation, enacting a modern-day tragedy of technological isolationism. 2. Eliza's Sacrifices, Japan's Roots Severed, Europe's Dream Shattered Following the U.S. command, Japan was the first to step up controls in 2023, listing 23 categories of core semiconductor equipment covering crucial stages like cleaning and lithography, under export licensing. As a result, Japan suffered first. Tokyo Electron's sales to China dropped from 28.3% to below 20%, and Nikon's Shanghai Joint Laboratory directly closed down. Japan's total semiconductor equipment export value for 2025 is projected to drop from $30.5 billion to below $25 billion. The irony is stark. Chinese companies immediately switched to Amex etching machines as alternatives, with no performance difference. Japanese media lamented that their industrial foundation was severed. Europe is in an even worse state. The European Chips Act aims to increase the market share from 10% to 20% by 2030, but little progress is visible. While ASML is strong, it relies on Chinese rare earths. Germany's Merck chemicals now face a 30% local substitution rate in China. More tellingly, NVIDIA's market capitalization alone exceeds 30% of all listed companies on the German stock exchange combined. Without the AI demand engine, who will Europe sell its chips to, no matter how many it manufactures? In 2024, European chip exports to China fell by 15% and the utilization rate of local factory capacity is as high as 28%. Analytical Commentary The tragedy of the U.S. allies proves that following technological blockades is a poison chalice. The decline of the Japanese semiconductor industry is a classic case. In the 1980s, Japan's precision manufacturing prowess allowed it to dominate half of the global semiconductor market, with memory products from companies like Hitachi and Toshiba leading the world. However, under U.S. pressure, Japan was forced to sign the U.S.-Japan Semiconductor Agreement, 
actively restricting chip exports and opening its domestic market, which severely damaged its industry. Today, while Japan retains some advantages in semiconductor equipment and materials, its long-term adherence to the U.S. technical blockade against China has caused it to miss the immense demand of the Chinese market. As local Chinese companies achieve breakthroughs in photoresists and etching machines, Japan's remaining equipment advantage is rapidly diminishing. 3. China's countermeasures, rare earths as a choke point, rule reversal as counterkill. Facing the blockade, China's counterattacks have been precise and fatal. In October 2024, China upgraded its export controls, directly copying the U.S. 50% rule. Any chip equipment containing over 50% Chinese technology requires an export license. An even tougher measure is rare earth control. Products containing as little as 0.1% Chinese rare earths now require a license. A red line crossed by key capacitors in NVIDIA's chips and the samarium cobalt magnets in the F-35 jet. The U.S. has rare earth mines in California but lacks the refining capabilities, having to ship the ore to China for processing, essentially putting its jugular vein in the hands of others. The technological breakthrough is even more shocking. Huawei's Ascend uses SMIC's 14 nanometers process for mass production, with 2025 shipments projected to exceed 700,000 units, far above the U.S. forecast of 200,000. Cambricon secured a major contract worth 300 million renminbi, and Birin Technology iterated new products, pushing the market share of domestic AI chips from 7% to 32%. In contrast, U.S. EDA tool exports to China fell by 40% in 2024, and domestic U.S. companies, having lost the Chinese market, cut R&D investment by 25%, falling into a fatal loop of blockade, blood loss, lagging behind. Analytical commentary. China's counter moves in the chip war are by no means an impulsive, sulking reaction but a carefully considered strategic breakthrough. Taking rare earth control as an example, as a critical raw material for chip manufacturing, China precisely targets the West's lack of ingredients, pain point through reasonable resource management, creating unprecedented pressure on Western chip companies dependent on imported rare earths. Simultaneously, in the field of technology research and development, Chinese scientific teams continue to tackle tough challenges, from lithography technology breakthroughs to domestic chip process upgrades. This series of achievements has powerfully shattered the arrogant prejudice that China cannot build it. Having reviewed this chip offense and defense battle, has your perception been completely refreshed? The U.S. blockade became a catalyst. Allies became fall guys and China's breakthrough is a textbook case. Technology is never a tool for hegemony but a wealth for all humanity. Building a small yard with high fences will only result in shooting oneself in the foot.